Welcome. In uh, line by line, today with uh, two guests, Chromatic um, from Brazen Studios, hi, <laughs> and Grim from Griswold Grim YouTube channel. Okay, we will be analyzing a song originally written by The Who uh, called Behind Blue Eyes. Coincidentally, both of my guests have blue eyes, so <laughs> kind of a panel. Yeah, proven. <laughs> okay, Grim, uh, would you like to read it? No one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man behind blue eyes. No one knows what it's like to be hated, to be faded, to telling only lies. But my dreams aren't as empty as my conscience seems to be. I have hours only lonely. My love is vengeance that's never free. No one knows what it's like to feel these feelings like I do, and I blame you. No one bites back as hard on their anger. None of my pain and woe can show through. When my fist clenches, crack it open before I use it and lose my cool. When I smile, tell me some bad news before I laugh and look like a fool. And if I swallow anything evil, put your finger down my throat. And if I shiver, please give me a blanket. Keep me warm. Let me wear your coat. Yeah. <laughs> That's an excellent reading. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's analyze it. Um, four by four lines. Four uh, by four lines. <laughs> all right, number one. <clears throat> No one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man behind blue eyes. So, Grim, what does that mean to you? I think um, when you're a bad, sad man, you feel as though nobody else feels like you, that you're some kind of special bad, sad man. But I don't think it's accurate. I think that um, a lot of people know what it's like to be a bad, sad man from multiple eye colors. Absolutely. Uh, well, I guess for me, this one's kind of interesting because uh, if you look in cinema, I think blue eyes are def like insanely overrepresented. Uh, my theory behind that is that uh, blue eyes are easier to tell where the person is looking. Because um, if it's, you know, darker eyes, they just kind of look like beady holes in, the, in a white space. Versus like eyes with what are called epithelial rings. It's like the dark ring around the outside. It makes for kind of like a, a target. Um, you can like connote a sense of depth. And so like, basically if you have blue eyes, you kind of look like the people they put forth in the media. Um, whether you're them or not, uh, people sort of like, huh, you look kind of familiar. And then they expect something of you, even though they have no idea who you are, where you come from, <laughs> what you're stuck on at the moment, what you did yesterday, what you're trying to do today. They don't care that just because you look like someone they know or something like that. All of a sudden, they have all these expectations for you. And so, like, if those expectations are usually just a highlight reel of someone, they're going to assume you are going to be a 100% highlight factory. And therefore, like, to be, like, to be in the wrong on something or to feel just sad in general just, like, is an affront to people like that, which I, we're all fed the same, uh, you know, broad fountainhead of uh, culture which is Hollywood and if it's mostly blue-eyed people well you don't get to rest if you're a blue-eyed person that's how it's felt for me 
so uh, people project their expectation uh, based on your looks on your yeah, eye color exactly. right they're being shallow they're not not trying to understand the person then they're just saying oh this is a doppelganger of a person i know that just like he's always go 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 wow and so you have to like live up to that or something it's weird that that really sounds familiar to me what, what do you think uh, historically some people have favored blue eyes over other colors and they got into a lot of trouble for that mm -hmm. and maybe maybe that's why he ended up being a bad man to uh, portray the people that that put forth blue eyes as superior as as wrong and evil mm -hmm. yeah. Well, did Pete, what color eyes did Pete Townsend have? That would be oh, awkward. Pete Townsend, if... the one who wrote it? Yes, he actually wrote, yeah. I think he has blue color. Like, I would hope so. Otherwise, he's just lying. <laughs> yeah, he had, he had blue eyes. Uh, didn't he write it for uh, like uh, a villain named Jumbo or something? I don't know that villain. I'm not American, so. I have heard that rumor that it was from, but the only villain I could find named Jumbo was from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which is one of <laughs> the most traumatic masterpieces of all time. <laughs> it's like father of it. <laughs> like he came to Earth and ah, okay. oh, next four lines. All right, Grim, I think that's you. No, I'm pretty sure it's her turn. It's always oh. you. <laughs> and well, he did read first, and I read second, so I think it follows, Kara. But... Okay, I will read it. No one knows what it's like to be hated, to be fated, to tell in only lies. Uh, yeah. I think because the song was written originally for a villain and the villain was uh, like, from what I read on Wikipedia, okay, and the villain felt like a good person inside and he felt resentment towards others because they put him in that position, uh, like they forced him, they forced him, like that's what means to be fated to tell in only lies. They forced him to lie, even though he doesn't want it. And so he goes into the world and yet puts on that, again, the show, yet resenting the people. Reminds me of that uh, quote, uh, you put me on a pedestal so high up that I was short of breath. Yeah. Kind of thing. What do you think, Rin? Well, I'm supposed to lie to you right now? Because <laughs> of the blue eyes? <laughs> I know what that's like. So I think it's a fabulous example of like, you need a villain to move the story forward. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody's all shiny and happy and nothing is progressing you need someone to stir the pot a little bit and they often pick the guy with the blue eyes for that because of those hollywood reasons Fimatic mentioned earlier mm. and it makes us feel very special to have to lie to people when i think of blue-eyed people i think of anderson cooper and he's very trustworthy that's true <laughs> He like opposite of the Whelan. Clearly, clearly, that's one of the most stand-up men of our time. <laughs> oh, fuck. What do you think, Frank? About Anderson Cooper or this stanza? 
Uh, uh, it's the stand, the let's move on. Her shout out Anderson Cooper Villa. I love you. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. Thank you for visiting Ukraine during the war. All right. Well, following with the bad man and sad man aspect of the last uh, stanza, um, you then go on to just be like, like you said, like this person with this target on their back and like, no one knows what it's like to be just like default targeted as the villain, even if you haven't done anything to anyone in that room you're just now walking into for the very first time. You, you know, you just uh, it's like, oh, that guy smells like he'd be fun to hit or poke at or something. And then just to, you know, always have that no matter what, you know, to be fated to have this kind of reception. Um, and then to go on to just kind of always being put into a position to have to play up to the audience and be like, you know, oh, hey, how's it going, man? Oh, yeah, it's great. Versus like, oh, my God, not another one of these. Um, all the way to just, you know, saying some bullshit just to, like, take some heat off you. Like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I play a doctor on uh, television. <laughs> okay, cool. What's your name? I'm Dr. William Cleary. Nice to meet you. Um, but, you know, to be in the spotlight, but also be the target. It's, uh, uh, you know, to say no one knows what it's like is a little rough because I feel like Grim here feels it the same. It's true. It's true. But we like to feel special because I feel it at a deeper, more profound level than this Pete Townsend bloke, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, he still can go to sleep on his bed of money. Huh? You got to scrape that. But my dreams, they aren't as empty as my conscience seems to be. I have hours only lonely. My love is vengeance that's never free. This one, this first part is like, I almost see the guy like chopping up a body while he's singing this line. Dexter. Like my conscience seems to be very empty, but I dream of little of picnics in the park and little fluffy dogs and I don't get to have them. I have to chop up these people because I'm the villain. Yeah. So like that's what that stands speaks to me. <laughs> what to do for you, Kara? For me, um I am I'm only focusing on my love is vengeance that's never free. It's it, it that one that one like the, the other things my dreams aren't as empty. Mm, yeah, okay, good. But love is vengeance is never free. That's what made me sad. I was like, oh no, because you're put in that position and you are fated to be villain. You are not free to love. You can only have it as vengeance. It's like damn it, it's really sad. I can tell by the way you're laughing how <laughs> yes. sad it is for you. That's I, I famously known for that. Uh, the saddest the song is, the funny it gets. Because like, uh, I need good news. Uh, I have hours, only lonely. So he's alone because he can't love in a normal way. It has to be vengeance that is not free. Like, it has to be forced. There should be some drama attached to it. Like, he can't have the fluffy dog, like the nice little love. It has to have massive amounts of drama attached to it. That's why he's lonely, because, like, not many people live up to that type of drama, um, I guess. And, yeah, what do you think, Dramatic? Well, let's see. The, the like conscience would be sort of the, the like waking actions of the person, and you know what who it seems to be empty to is perhaps you know as standard audience with their pre preconceived notions derived of the fact that first they noticed this guy had really blue eyes. Um, they think like, man, this guy just doesn't seem to give a fuck about anything that's going on around him. Like this guy just must be completely vapid just completely like without conscience um so you know why wouldn't you be that way if you're constantly the target you have to grow a thick skin you have to be willing to continue to move on and not get caught up in 
just like the locale because sometimes it'll be mostly against you but sometimes it'll be almost entirely in your favor and like just to know those moments are there is you know important and keeps you going but also i think from the outside it's like you don't really seem to get too flapped about things or you seem a little aloof or like maybe just like apathetic or even kind of like fuck you about certain things um like like what what do you think about like what do you dream about it's like well you know what things i dream of uh unfortunately they don't exist and so i'm set out to you know find them out if they're i just didn't know what to call them and was having a hard time searching or figure out how to build them you know through the process of invention so like you, I may see like some dopey dude that's just loping by in a goofy way. Uh, but you know, don't take your shot at me because one, I'll probably dodge it. Two, I'll send it back your way. But three, like I got more going on than what you think. I'm not just some guy who, like, you know, wore a turtleneck and therefore all I care about is what I'm wearing. Um, I got a lot more going then on than that. And unfortunately that means Sometimes I go at a rate that's a little bit um, uncomfortable for others. And the only way I can get it out is when they're gone. I'm by myself. And I got hours like that. Um, thankfully, we had things like Discord and Zoom for this pandemic. And it didn't get too lonely. But you know, love is vengeance. I don't know. I think sometimes it can be tough being the guy with blue eyes. Because I, I hear from time to time, like, hey, it feels like you're looking through me when you look at me. Um, cause I don't know. I have like really light blue eyes. Um, it's weird to people cause most people don't. Um, I get that same thing with the looking through, but it's usually when I'm actually looking through them and they just catch me because my eyes are so telling. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then, you know, that, that can scare away the ones that you're really interested in. The ones that got away are often like got too close and were maybe unnerved or something like that. Uh, that happens. <laughs> Yeah, and so, like, the ones that, like, you know, the ones that compromise with you and then, like, support you are also probably looking for someone slightly different. But, you know, in the end, like, you're mostly good for each other. And so you support each other. And but in a weird way, it's sometimes, like, oh, man, still interested in that one that got away. So your love with the one that stayed is you know, sadly vengeful rather than romantic or... Um, I don't know, creative, uh, whatever, yeah. I'm well, uh, I, I just, like, I was triggered by projections a little bit because, I think, like, did you guys ever think that people ever projected on a, on a like, green-eyed, uh, light-skinned Ukrainian woman? Absolutely. <laughs> But I, think I didn't think anyone paid attention to green-eyed people at all. <laughs> like, like I, I had been um, like people just based on my looks would just just immediately like categorize me without even knowing. Okay, you you look like that, and you come from that country, and they would already know everything about me for some reason. Like oh, they would be decided. completely wrong like completely wrong like there is nothing correct about the assumptions and i learned that at some point just not to prove people wrong um once like yeah th there were some stories bound to that uh, although i did not feel uh that no one knows what it's like i felt like okay all the other women feel like me like, I, I kind of felt this... Uh, green-eyed solidarity. Yes, the green-eyed solidarity, people. Plus, like, for me, uh, I come from a long line of green-eyed people. All my relatives have those clear green eyes, like, absolutely clear. Like, even without the target ring, like, there is no, like, almost nothing, just, like, pure green. And for me, it's something really common. It was like uh, nothing special. And then when people would make assumption based on my looks, not necessarily on my eye color, but just based on my looks, I was surprised. Like, why would you like judge a person based on looks? Is it, is it a thing like a pattern recognition? It's terribly convenient. 
It saves a lot of brain power if you just project. You're probably like that, aren't you? And wait for them to, yeah. to manifest their own individuality outside of that. Exactly. Mm. All right. And then finally, no one knows what it's like to feel these feelings like I do. And I blame you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm still a little, the no one knows what it's like thing is very self-centered. I guess that can, <laughs> unfortunately that speaks to the ego that this, this person is complaining about for their perceptions. Like, I don't like to th say things like no one or always or every time or whatever, personally. It's like, you could know what this is like to be a, you know, green-eyed solidarity. <laughs> well, since this guy is a blue-eyed villain, he probably knows better that people do know what it's like. And he's like, you know, but the really selfish people that feel like they're super special, they'll have to buy this song because I put it this way, that it'll resonate so hard with them that, that right, they'll sure. feel that nobody knows what it's like. And so they'll love this song and I'll get richer. And so he's, he feels like evil for doing it. And he blames the people who are going to buy the song because they feel so special. I, I only read it as isolation thing. He feels so isolated that he would reject the notion of people understanding him. I actually, um, I did not read it as self-centeredness or selfishness part, but he feels so like disappointed in people and isolated that he will just prejudge the rest of them as nobody will be ever able to get me and like my my initial woman instinct would be no let me tell you like i absolutely will understand you i will know, i know what it's like like i would uh, try to comfort uh, that person if somebody feels like that but it is uh, it, it i sense uh, isolation here um yeah and blame you because he feels like he was he did not choose that position they put him like whatever the rest of the people made him in that position and he would like to be free from that although contact lenses would be an option though <laughs> contact lenses but the song was in 1970 i don't it might not have been then. I don't know how okay, far okay. back the, that technology goes. Mm -hmm, yeah, true. Is it my turn again? No, from oh, my, what do you think? <laughs> what is it me? And the blame one. Yeah, what do you think about that one? Oh, well, I was just saying the thing about no one and always and every time and all that. But yeah, like I do and I blame you. Um, I don't know, I guess I feel that because sometimes I am forced to explain myself and repeat myself in explanation. And, you know, I, I have to repeat myself or sometimes I have to restate the, the sentiment and nothing seems to like land. No one bites back as hard on their anger. None of my pain and woe can show through. All right, who's up? There you go. I like the uncomfortable silence, but sure, sure. <laughs> no, no, I'll go. I'll go. Um, I think this is like a blanket he wraps himself in to make himself feel better. It's like, I'm doing so good. It's at hiding my feelings. And he's just like a, an affirmation he tells himself. This this stands up. Kara, what do you think? I, I again I'm super sad for that one. 
You can tell by my smile. Like it, it's again, it's a protective mechanism. The saddest the song gets, I need to wrap myself in a blanket of laughter and humor. No one bites back on heart on their anger. Isolation again here. None of my pain and woe can show through. Uh, plus the statement of agony that the person goes through. Uh, basically, uh, I'm hurt. I hate it, and you all people suck, and I will just do my best to bite as hard as I can back, because that's what strong people do. So he's forcing himself to be this way, even through pain. That's what I read into it. Well, for me, I think it, it goes back to that sort of like expectation of like, hey, I know, I know someone who looks, you look kind of like this person I know, or you like, hey, you look like this arbitrary celebrity or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if there are these expectations and that are, are assigned to you just sort of on literally the, the first glance at you, then like the ex, like the, the standard of like behavior is held up, but like the bar is a lot higher. And so like it, to be angry with those expectations, it goes a long way towards burning your reputation. And like, I don't know, personally, I've burnt my reputation with too many people because like sometimes they're expecting a lot of me, of me and at the same time poking at me harder than makes sense. And, you know, I can either like let that go or let that go or at a certain point just start speaking up and if that ex escalates and it keeps going on eventually at a certain point i'll snap but when my fist clenches crack it open before i use it and lose my cool when i smile tell me some bad news before i laugh and act like a fool i need your help controlling myself in the following ways <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a little codependent for someone who's coming into this being like, oh, no one knows. Like, now, now you're putting it on them? You know? Well, nobody knows, so let me tell you. <laughs> when my fist clenches, crack it up. <laughs> yeah, this guy's a hothead. Uh, yeah, punches? I don't throw punches. It's ridiculous. I like it how it's backwards before I use it and lose my cool. Because usually you use your, lose your cool before you use your fist. He's like, first I'll punch it. And then I'll be like, oh, my God, I punched somebody. Dang it. What happened? <laughs> That's a good point. I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that um, he's very uh, people-oriented person. Like, he really depends on their opinion. So he's like, listen, guys, I'm not in control of myself. So I'm not in control of my destiny, apparently. Yeah. You, you, you are the ones who put me in here. You fated me for it. And I blame you. I hate you for that. And none of you understands me. I feel isolated because of you, people. Like, and then he's like, okay. And now you have to... Uh, not have to, but I would appreciate if you guys helped me when my fist clenches and I lose my cool. So I think he is opening up a little bit here. He's like showing the vulnerable side yeah. and asking for help. Like in this song, this is when the music really ramps up, though. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. And so. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just needed a breakdown to cover his breakdown. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. No, because this is definitely the like letting down the armor part of the song, where everything else is like, oh, you couldn't possibly under understand my perspective and all this shit. Like the things you count as like regular life experience it just worked for me. But like, you know, <laughs> as the song is starting to it become a much more driving uh, melody and rhythm and all that he's starting to have his breakdown in terms of his like 
how hard he's holding up his emotional armor. Like when, when my fist clenches, crack it open. So it's like, you know, it's kind of putting the onus on the, the, the audience, uh, but also just finally, you know, yielding to some level of, uh, I don't know, vulnerability. Uh, you know, there's something you could do about my anger and you know, before I use it and lose my cool. And then when I smile, it's like, tell me some bad news. I mean, he is sound kind of, sounding kind of bipolar here, you know. <laughs> if I ball up my fist, like, it's on you to do something. You didn't crack my fist open, so of course I used it. <laughs> uh, or like, hey, if I'm getting too manic, you got to slow me down. <laughs> when I smile, tell me some bad news. <laughs> Before I laugh and act like a fool. I don't know, Mr. Townsend. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah. I get it. With before I laugh and act like a fool, that that is very relatable, because to you, to me, yes. Green-eyed solidarity. I'm willing to accept it. Like it's it's relatable when I when I smile, tell me some bad news, before I laugh and like act like a fool. Although I I really might laugh harder if somebody tells me bad news. It it was. Well, well, it was a very common thing to deal with uh, sadness and tragedy through laughter. That's why I like all the insult comics, comedians, like very famous one, Anton Jesselny, coincidentally with like, extremely blue eyes. He's just like, he drives the dragon. He's like, yeah, I have blue eyes. I'm better than all of you. And that's the basis of his insult comedy. Well, He's just like, be smarter and prettier. And then you can hate me. <laughs> like, I really like it because he he actually uh, would take out all the pressure from being blue-eyed uh, and turn it uh, to serve him as a person. He's like, yeah, I was born pretty. Deal with it. <laughs> He's like, really, I, like one of my most favorite insult comedians. Yeah. I will read the last one. All right. And if I swallow anything evil, put your finger down my throat. And if I shiver, please give me a blanket. Keep me warm. Let me wear you cold. I read it because that all of that sound very female. And was like, did you turn into little girl, dude? <laughs> It's like especially the part give me a blanket, keep me warm. It's like yeah. Yeah, right? Like, come on. <laughs> Nobody knows what it's like to feel this angry. Please give me a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> I want a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really softened up at the end there to like balance out the like hard driving. Power chords. <laughs> uh, just, okay. That's why Limbisky just completely like removed that part. <laughs> yeah, right. He, that's <laughs> true. He, he hardened it up a little bit. Uh, as, yeah. a, as a limp biscuit, but <laughs> <laughs> it was it was too too too, too soft for Limbisky. They needed to make it. Guilt trippy, I guess. <laughs> Bake it for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> so yeah, we're a bunch of pouty saps, us blue-eyed folk. It comes with the blue eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. People are like everybody. Is, but is it good to generalize though? It seems like a projection. And the thing of projection was the whole point. Guys, please do not project on us because of the blue eyes. We actually do like blankets. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can always throw a blanket on me. I'll, I'll either, like, put it to use or fold it up nicer than you have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so blanket is uh, just coincidentally another thing not related to eye color, I guess. What are you saying? Green people need blankets too? 
Green-eyed people need blankets too. I think everybody does. No, that's not what I heard. You don't need blankets. Everybody does. No, I will cover myself up with all the skins of. <laughs> Sorry. No. This, whoa, whoa, whoa. Still over here. <laughs> the skins of my enemies will keep me warm. You can take my blanket. Is it, is it I don't cold? need a blanket. There is a lot of <laughs> Well, it's, what do you do with your free time? <laughs> yeah, right? Going back to that, uh, yeah, what, what line was that? The um to be the whatever the guy hacking up the person <laughs> turns out that was care the whole thing yeah. yes i had to lie about it i'm baited because the eyes <laughs> I was covering for her. all right well i gotta get going uh this is fun let's okay. do more of these yes okay so um Thank you, Framati, for joining. Uh, Green, thank you for joining. Absolutely. And guys, you, you gave an excellent input. Uh, please enjoy the gifts of our sponsor, Free Time. And you are the master of it. You choose. Nobody fates you to use your free time in a wrong way. Use it wisely. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, I will provide the links below how you can support our blue-eyed guests on here. You know, if you want to uh, give us a coat or a blanket, exactly. the link's below. Yeah. Give one of those. But give her a like and a subscribe, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Okay, back to the recording, and thank you again, as I, as I told you from my check, I'm using uh, unlimited free time. Oh, we should remind me guys to advertise my sponsor free time, which is very important. That's, that's the most important commodity in life is our free time. So you're doing the ad now, or do you want us to remind you? No, 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 I will, I, I, you guys remind me, please. Unless, like, if, if I will forget, I will use that moment. I was just like, put it away, but...